that Remington 760 Game Master they've got in the Civil Rights Museum is not the murder weapon. It's not even close. And it was a two-man hit team that killed him from the fire station dormitory. It wasn't the flop house, and it wasn't in those bushes. So, yeah, I got into the deep details of Dr. King, and that three- or four-year period, that case was kicking around in front of me. So you're saying that the, the James Earl Ray did not kill Martin Luther King? No, he King, didn't kill him. Even, and see, even though most people, well, he was he convicted kill for him. it, right? He didn't kill him. Uh, it's interesting, the homicide file for the Memphis Police Department reaches the same conclusion back in 1968. Uh, they entered their file in protest to the DA's office. Their conclusion was Ray is not the gunman. He was not even in Memphis that day. We know conclusively where he was. So why do you think he got convicted for the murder? Well, he didn't get convicted. He pled guilty. You have to understand, though, the news media puts it out as he was the self-confessed killer of King. That's not true. All through the transcripts, the entirety of the record, he never confessed, and often he said, I never said I killed King. I didn't kill him. I'm pleading cause of Alford. That's A-L-F-O-R-D. It's a moderately old U.S. Supreme Court case, and it says even if you are not actually guilty and you are pristinely innocent, you may plead guilty to the charge if you think that doing so is in your best interest under all of the circumstances as you know them to be, and you're doing so freely, voluntarily, understandingly, knowingly, advisedly, and intelligently. So Ray had gone through all of these and had lost, but there was something that came up. Modern scientific methodology took away one further necessary element. All of these things had to be there, and the state had to have a reasonable factual basis upon which to proceed otherwise. The thing the state relied upon was the rifle, but modern scientific methodology excluded that rifle from being the murder weapon. The bullet they pull out of King's body has a rate of rifling twist of one turn in every 11 and a quarter inches. The rifle that Ray had had a rate of rifling twist of one turn in every 10 inches in a bad manufacturing defect that is not apparent on the death slug. Uh, he was shot with an XM-21, it's a 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO caliber weapon with a special stainless steel barrel, a 3 to 9 telescopic sight modified by a company known as Leatherwood. It was a Redfield sight, and they used special subsonic ammunition with a suppressor on the end to reduce the velocity of the bullet to below supersonic to confuse the sound signature. The shot came from the dormitory in the fire station through a window that had been slightly parted. They were several feet inside. It was a two-man team, a spotter and a shooter. That's what he got killed by. Uh, if you shoot somebody at that closer range, which was about 50, 60 yards, with a 30 caliber rifle anywhere in the torso, if the individual is standing next to an emergency room, it's a non-survivable wound. But what they did is they took a head shot they almost missed because the bullet was reduced in velocity. It hit King on the right cheek, took out some molars, wrecked his tongue, came out between his jaws, left the body, hit his clavicle, ricocheted under the skin that covered the clavicle, nicked his carotid artery, went over his right shoulder, down across the back and lodged between the left scapula and his back skin. And the bullet never penetrated his thorax. Now that sounds a little weird, but it's not uncommon. So he bled out from the nicked carotid artery and they almost missed the shot. 
and Ray was nowhere around.